This is video tutorial number 9, Power Debt Plan Spreadsheet. My name is Jeffrey Smith. In this tutorial I want to build on the previous tutorial number 8 about the difference between good debt and bad debt. In the previous tutorial I showed how to use good debt by borrowing money on a home equity line of credit in order to accelerate the payoff of your debts, including the home equity line of credit, by purchasing a rental property with positive cash flow. In this example, we'll take it one step further. This is the pro forma income valuation sheet on the property analysis short form spreadsheet. In this sheet, I have specified the income and expense summary for a potential rental property. $1,200 per month, rental income, credit loss for deadbeat tenants, gross operating expense of $1,750 per year and that is just the property insurance and annual taxes and the monthly HOA times 12 which is simply zero because we're not using an HOA. Specify the debt coverage ratio of 1.5. That is the value of the net operating income divided by the annual debt service. And from these calculations, with a loan to value rate of 70 percent, five and a quarter percent, amortized over 300 months, that's 25 years, this potential property can support a debt of $99,291. If that debt is 70 percent, of the after repaired value, then the after repaired value is $141,844 with a 30% equity margin of $42,553. The cash flow before tax is monthly $297. Now suppose you don't have an equity line of credit on your home and you don't have $42,553 sleeping in your bank account. What you can do is a fix and rent project. You can find a distressed property and fix it up, create value, and then refinance to pay off your private financiers and you'll have retained equity of $42,500. On the property analysis worksheet, I have a sample input showing property is a one unit property, 1800 square feet, three bedrooms, two baths, two parking spaces. The after repaired value is a formula reference to the calculated pro forma property value. The investment to value is a formula reference to the loan to value rate. The idea is that we are working backwards from the after repaired value to calculate how much we can offer on this property. Assuming 3% of the maximum allowable offer as the closing cost to buy, we maintain a running subtotal of these costs. Repairs I've guesstimated at $20,000. Project manager fee, that is to pay me while I am running this project or if I sell this project to someone else for that project owner to pay himself while working the project. If the project is being sold to someone else as a wholesale deal, I've calculated a rough assignment fee of $7,000. That includes recovery of the earnest money deposit plus a guesstimate of what the assignment fee is worth in terms of a minimum of $6,000 or 3% of the after repaired value or 10% of the net profit. Carrying costs are calculated down below in terms of the prorated property taxes, prorated property insurance, and the debt service on the hard money loan with a 12% annualized interest only rate and monthly utilities at $100. I'm also throwing in 4% points for the hard money lender to calculate an exit cost of $3,723 to pay off the hard money rolled in points. This project is estimated to take a total of 90 days. That's 30 days to repair, 30 days to market, and 30 days to close. Therefore, the maximum offer is $54,317. We would start the bidding at about 20% below that 
$43,454. In this example, what we're doing is borrowing all of the carrying costs, that's all of the interest-only debt service, we're borrowing all of the project manager fee, assignment fee, staging and marketing, and the repair costs. All of this financing has to fit within about 65 to 70 percent of the after repaired value and we can see from the hard cost to ARV rate that is about 65.63 percent. This is well within hard money financing guidelines. The total hard cost that you will borrow from a hard money lender is $93,086. That includes the maximum offer and the entry costs. You don't have to borrow the exit costs because those costs are paid on the way out from money brought to the closing table by the retail buyer or from the refinance lender when you refinance the property. Back on the pro forma income valuation we see that this property after it's all fixed up and rented out and refinanced to pay off the short-term financing you will have created $42,500 of retained equity, 30% equity, and therefore your refinance loan is 70% loan to value. That's a very safe loan with a 1.5 debt coverage ratio. That gives you plenty of cash flow margin. There are also tabs for calculating repair estimates, for generating a quick turn investment summary for a private financier to quickly look at the deal and decide whether or not they want to invest in the deal. If it's a multi-unit property, there's a unit mix sheet and a comparable sales sheet for calculating the comparable sales valuation. Now that we know that we're getting 297 a month from this property after it's fixed up in 90 days, we can go back to the Power Debt Plan spreadsheet. We'll set the power base and then plug in 297 as the power extra payment and optimize. We can compare the, the difference. And now we see that we are saving an additional $8,378 from this power extra payment of 297 and this 297 is not coming out of your pocket it's coming out of your tenant's pocket the tenant is also paying down your debt on the rental property and your debt is 99,291 five and a quarter percent 300 standard payments so let's add that row in. First mortgage, rental property, 99,291, interest rate 5.25, 300 payments. This verifies that your debt service monthly payment is 595. We can then reoptimize. And we're back from the reoptimize. Now we see that to pay off your rental property and your four debt accounts is only 9.61 years, and you haven't added any additional expenses out of your pocket because the first mortgage is being paid by your tenant, and the additional 297 is paid by your tenant, and therefore you have saved an additional $50,000 by using the power of good debt and leveraged income. Now let's take this one step farther. Suppose that you acquired 10 rental properties with no net cash invested Let's change this debt description to first mortgage rental times 10. Change the principal balance times 10. And the regular payment is times 10. And your positive cash flow from those rental properties times 10. And let's reoptimize. 
Okay, and we're back from the optimize. Now you can see that the first four debt accounts have been paid off in a total of 20 months. Once those debts are paid off, all remaining 10 rental properties will be fully paid off in 123 months. That's just 10 years and 3 months. So you'll be completely debt free in 12 years and you will have 10 free and clear rental properties with a total income $8,920 of passive rental income. That sounds like a pretty good retirement plan that you can implement in just 12 years. This has been Power Debt Plan Spreadsheet number 9. My name is Jeffrey Smith and thank you for your support.